Veterinary Endocrinology Low Thyroid Levels in Dogs In this presentation we are going to discuss the causes, diagnosis, and treatment of low thyroid levels in dogs. This endocrine condition is commonly known as hypothyroidism in dogs. In dogs, low thyroid hormone levels, commonly known as hypothyroidism, are among the most frequently identified and treated endocrine illnesses by general veterinary practitioners. In veterinary facilities, canine hypothyroidism is one of the most often detected endocrine illnesses. This illness is most frequently diagnosed in dogs between the ages of 4 and 7, with an average age of onset of roughly 4 to 7 years. However, it can develop as early as 2 to 3 years of age in some situations. This fact is critical to notice since early onset hypothyroidism may go untreated if the veterinarian believes hypothyroidism is a disease that affects only older dogs. Golden Retrievers, Doberman Pinschers, Dachshunds, Irish Setters, Schnauzers, Miniature Poodles, Cocker Spaniels, Chow Chows, and English Bulldogs are the most often affected breeds. Additionally, Great Danes, Newfoundlands, Airedales, Irish Wolfhounds, Scottish Deerhounds, and Afghan hounds are hypothyroid breeds. Although hypothyroidism is more prevalent in spayed and neutered pets, there is no proven sex predisposition. Hypothyroidism manifests clinically as a decrease in the synthesis of thyroxine, also known as T4, and triiodothyronine, popularly known as T3. The pituitary gland generates thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, and stimulates the thyroid gland to create T3 and T4 in an average dog. However, this mechanism does not generally occur in a hypothyroid dog. As a result, the hormones T3 and T4 are generated at lower amounts. These hormones are involved in the metabolism, growth, and development of the body. There are three types of hypothyroidism in dogs. The first category is primary hypothyroidism, which accounts for 95% of all diagnosed cases in dogs. Within this category, the disease originates within the thyroid gland itself. Lymphocytic thyroiditis most frequently causes primary hypothyroidism. This condition is an autoimmune reaction in which lymphocytic infiltrates cause thyroid gland tissue destruction. In lymphocytic thyroiditis, thyroid-stimulating hormone levels will begin to rise in an attempt to compensate for the declining T4 and T3 levels. Primary hypothyroidism can also be caused by idiopathic thyroid atrophy. In this situation, normal thyroid tissue is replaced by adipose and connective tissue, but no inflammatory cells are visible. It is uncertain what causes idiopathic thyroid atrophy. Some experts believe it is merely the last stage of lymphocytic thyroiditis. Neoplasia is the third most prevalent cause of primary hypothyroidism in dogs. However, it is also the least common. Although less prevalent than primary hypothyroidism, Secondary hypothyroidism can occur. Secondary hypothyroidism is a term that refers to occurrences of diminished thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, production or activity. Pituitary neoplasia, pituitary abnormalities, and TSH suppression induced by medicines or disease are the most common reasons for reduced TSH in dogs. Although this illness is uncommon, congenital hypothyroidism has been recorded in dogs. Thyroid dysgenesis, iodine shortage during the fetal or newborn stage, dishormonogenesis, T4 transport abnormalities, and goitrogens are all possible causes of congenital hypothyroidism. Lethargy, weight gain, exercise intolerance, and skin illness are the most typical clinical indications of canine hypothyroidism. It is pretty common to hear a dog owner express concern that their dog is slowing down or becoming old due to this endocrine problem. The following are common skin issues connected with canine hypothyroidism. Alopecia bilaterally symmetrical. Hair coat that is dry and brittle. Hyperpigmentation of the skin. Seborrhea, which may be oily and scaly in appearance and has an unpleasant odor. Inadequate wound healing. After grooming, hair growth is slowed. Sad facial expression. Skin folds are thickened. Low thyroid levels can cause ophthalmologic problems such as corneal lipid deposits, due to hyperlipidemia, and dry eye. The following are neurological indications of hypothyroidism in dogs. 
Peripheral neuropathies are frequently associated with the development of megasophagus, laryngeal paralysis, and aberrant cranial nerves 5, 7, and 8. These neuropathies are caused by the accumulation of mucopolysaccharides within the neurons or by anomalous mitochondrial action. Myopathy symptoms are frequently modest and difficult to distinguish from the typical lethargy associated with this endocrine disorder. Muscular biopsies often reveal type 2 muscle atrophy. Although the exact physiologic etiology of this condition is unknown, it is related to aberrant glucose metabolism or mitochondrial function. Although myasthenia gravis is not commonly connected with hypothyroidism in dogs, examples have been described in the scientific literature. When confronted with a dog suspected of hypothyroidism, we must initiate the diagnostic process by completing a complete blood count, CBC, a biochemical profile, a urinalysis, and T4 level. The CBC reveals mild non-regenerative anemia in 25% of cases. The non-regenerative anemia is due to a deficit of erythropoietin, diminished bone marrow activity, and reduced serum iron binding capacity. In 75% of instances, the biochemical profile reveals fasting hypercholesterolemia. This finding is due to altered lipid metabolism, decreased lipid conversion to bile acids, and decreased fecal cholesterol excretion. In 30% of patients, the biochemical profile also demonstrate mild hyponatremia. The hyponatremia is due to an increase in total body water as a result of reduced renal excretion. Urinalysis results can range from being unremarkable to indicating the presence of additional metabolic problems impacting the patient. T4 levels may be lower than the recommended range. Many vets will diagnose hypothyroidism based on the presence of low T4. Regrettably, this is not an accurate assessment. T4 levels in a dog can be lowered for various causes, including hypothyroidism, age, breed, drug use, and systemic illness. Because T4 levels alone are not a good indicator of hypothyroidism in dogs, we must perform other tests to confirm the diagnosis. When confirming hypothyroidism in dogs, free T4 levels may be a more trustworthy test. The term free T4 refers to the metabolically active fraction of T4, which is T4 that is not protein-bound in the bloodstream. Free T4 is about 97% specific for hypothyroidism in dogs. Generally, free T4 is unaffected by medicines or illness to the same extent as total T4 is. It is impacted, albeit it might occasionally drop as a result of severe disease. Thus, in the absence of systemic disease, a low free T4 level most likely suggests genuine hypothyroidism. TSH testing in dogs can also assist us in determining whether a patient is indeed hypothyroid. Unfortunately, TSH testing is not always sensitive or specific, with up to 30% of hypothyroid dogs having normal TSH levels and up to 20% of sicu thyroid dogs having increased TSH levels. The most significant advantage of TSH testing is when it is combined with free T4 levels. Hypothyroidism is quite likely in a dog with low free T4 levels and elevated TSH levels. By combining these two tests, the danger of overdiagnosis and overtreatment of this disorder is decreased. Antibodies to thyroglobulin can be used to diagnose thyroiditis before the onset of hypothyroidism, potentially aiding in the early identification of hypothyroid dogs. Around 20% of clinically healthy and asymptomatic dogs with increased antibody levels will develop hypothyroidism within a year. While this testing may have little therapeutic utility, it can benefit breeding decisions, particularly susceptible breeds. Canine hypothyroidism is treated with levothyroxine, a synthetic T4. Typically, this drug is started at a dose of 0.02 mg per kilogram every 12 hours. It is critical to note that we should not exceed 0.8 mg per kilogram twice daily in large dogs. Most dogs will experience clinical benefits within the first few weeks of initiating treatment, and when dosed adequately, this medicine has minor adverse effects. Three to four weeks after initiating treatment, T4 levels are measured to assess response to the thyroid medication. Serum T4 levels should be determined four to eight hours after the tablet is taken. Suppose the patient's T4 level is below average or near the low end of the normal range. In that case, the veterinarian may raise the dose of levothyroxine, and the doctor will examine the T4 level again three to four weeks later. 
If the dog's T4 level is at the upper or lower end of the normal range, the clinician can maintain the dog on the same dose. Once a dog has stabilized on a maintenance dose of levothyroxine, the practitioner should test serum T4 levels every three months. If the T4 levels remain normal, the doctor should recheck them every six months for long-term maintenance. The prognosis for the majority of instances of canine hypothyroidism is favorable with effective therapy. Exceptions are myxedema coma and undiagnosed congenital hypothyroidism. These individuals have a more bleak outlook. Owners often notice improvements during the first few weeks of treatment, with most symptoms resolved within four to eight weeks. However, skin disorders caused by hypothyroidism usually take longer to resolve, frequently several months but are typically well-controlled with adequate T4 regulation.